In this presentation, we're going to look at the larger private sector organisations. We're going to have a look at public limited companies, franchises and multinationals. Now, these types of business organisation are asked for at hire. So this becomes really important that you are able to do the questions that you're going to be asked some past paper questions after you listen to this presentation. So these are really important types of business organisation. The first one we're going to look at are public limited companies or PLCs. So I'm looking at some advantages and disadvantages of PLCs now. With uh, advantages are that there is more capital than private limited companies due to the fact that the shares are issued on the stock exchange and there is a bigger audience out there to be able to buy them as opposed to your private limited companies that are sold among uh, friends and family. Public limited companies can dominate the market. They're normally very large businesses that have a big market share, so they tend to dominate the market. There's limited liability. We spoke about this term when we spoke about private limited companies. And limited liability, remember, means that shareholders will only lose what they put in to buy the shares if the business goes under. They don't lose personal possessions like they did with sole traders and partnerships. The final point here as far as advantages is concerned is it's easier for PLCs to borrow money. Banks see them as being stronger, as having a large market, so they tend to find that there'll be less risk, so it'll be easy to, 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 to borrow money for them. Disadvantages, however, Due to the fact that they are public limited companies and they had to, they have to adhere to the Companies Act, the information is expensive through legal and admin costs. You have to publish your accounts as a public limited company, which means that your business is open to competitors to see. They can see your accounts, they can see your expenses, they can see your profits, your share, your sorry, your sales. So there's not an awful lot kept private there, but that's the law. They can become too large to manage effectively, so decisions can become more difficult to make. Far too many people who have to perhaps be involved in decision making makes it difficult for people to agree on different decisions, thus voting has to take place. This economies of scale is another issue and what happens here is if the business gets too big and it gets out of control it may end up costing the business more money there may be more stock wasted because it's been over ordered uh, you know you have more management to pay all of these things can lead to rising costs which we call diseconomies of scale and finally your dividends have to be shared among many shareholders so shareholders are looking for a dividend, they're wanting a share of the profit because they've invested in the business, so the result of that is that you're having to share some of your profits out to the, the, the shareholders. Next we're going to look at multinationals and multinational corporations have branches, we sometimes call these subsidiaries and they have these in more than one country and that's what makes them a multinational. Many companies establish sales outlets for their products in various countries. So you might have, for example, branches of Zara in different uh, countries, etc. However, the distinguishing feature of a multinational is it sets up production facilities in more than one country. So you'll find there may be manufacturing in different countries, for example, computer giants, etc. Some reasons why an organisation may choose to become a multinational would be an increase in market share. They may find that because they have perhaps sold in their own domestic market, they may want to find new sales outlets and by going into other countries they can get extra sales in those different countries. They can secure cheaper premises and labour. In some other countries it may be less expensive for you to pay your staff because they may not have minimum wage regulations etc. So you'll find that your wage bill could be less in those countries. In addition, the governments of these countries may want to bring other companies in. So they may offer good deals, rent-free, rate-free premises for a certain period of time. So your premises could be cheaper. You can also avoid tax or trade barriers. 
the tax in our country may be particularly ex expensive, it may be particularly high, which means corporation tax has to be paid, more has to be paid on their profits. In addition, you're not then having to pay trade barriers, you're not perhaps having to pay taxes to get products into different countries, which is going to put the price up, because the organisation exists in that country, in that market. So you're not going to have to pay to import products into the country. You can also take advantage of government grants in these countries, which is a bit similar to what we spoke about earlier on there with the rate free and the rent free premises. You can maybe take advantage of government grants in countries that are perhaps developing and looking for companies to come in and, and improve their economy. Some advantages and disadvantages now of multinationals. So looking at advantages first, they provide jobs and income to these developing countries or countries where unemployment may be quite high. Uh, the, the, their standard of living may not be particularly high. So that's going to increase the reputation of the multinational. In addition, you can improve the level of expertise of local workers by bringing people in from the home country and teaching them more skills, which gives you a more skilled workforce generally in your country. Economies of scale, we spoke about this a few minutes ago with diseconomies of scale. By increasing your size, you can reduce your average costs, the cost per pro unit of your product, because you're maybe able to buy in bulk, you're able to train more than one person at a time, so you're, you're spending less money overall in training, etc. You can also avoid adverse legislation in your home country. We spoke about uh, the, the minimum wage regulations, the living wage regulations, health and safety. In other countries, they may not be as particular about legislation, which means that you may be spending less money um, implementing that legislation. Disadvantages, however, you could be exploiting labour in low-wage countries, which could give you a bad reputation. We sometimes call these sweatshops. The profits go back to the parent country, so the people are being paid in the host country, we call it the host country, they are being paid but any profits go back to the home country. The power could force governments to make decisions they may not really want to make. If they decide, for example, that a piece of legislation doesn't isn't suitable for the company and they're employing a lot of people in that com uh, country, then they could threaten to, to move out if the government don't change their practices. And we've got here language barriers. Obviously, in different countries, you're training people. It can be difficult to make them understand perhaps technical terms or whatever if they have this language barrier, which you have to try and get over. And finally, you've got cultural differences. Differences in the way people work. We have differences in religions, etc. With Ramadan, you have to take that into account. When Ramadan's there um, and people are not eating during the day, do you give them more breaks? Do they have to have time off to pray? All of these things have to be taken into account. Finally, we're going to look at franchises, and you may have heard of these before. I'm sure you're familiar with some really famous franchises. But a franchise is a business where a business or an individual buys a license to operate a well-known firm. They are owned by the franchiser, and the franchisee pays the franchiser a fee to allow them to operate. So the franchisee is the person who is buying the branch of this well-known franchise. The franchisee must pay a percentage of their profits in the form of a royalty to the franchiser and they have to run the business according to the franchisor's guidelines. This comes up a little bit in a second when we look at the uh, pros and cons for each party here. Examples of franchises are Pizza Hut, KFC, Kendry, who clean carpets etc, Chips Away who fix chips and bumps in your car and Papa Jones. So looking at advantages and disadvantages of franchising to the franchiser first and foremost, this is the main company. The advantages are they can expand their business really easily because they're allowing people to buy branches which is allowing the business to grow. The franchiser can earn large amounts of money through the initial cost paid to them for the franchisee to open the branch and through the royalty that's paid every year on the profits. 
the franchisor still maintains control of the business and if the franchisee comes up with some good suggestions then it can be of benefit to the franchise generally. The famous old example is the Egg McMuffin for McDonald's was actually thought up by a franchisee and it was then thought to be a great idea and put into practice. Disadvantages, however, any mistakes made by the individual franchisee could damage the overall business's reputation. Poor sanitation, poor cleaning, poor quality foods, not properly cooked, etc. can be a problem. The franchisor is still responsible for the costs of training, advertising, etc. and that can be expensive. Finally, we're going to look at advantages and disadvantages of franchising to the franchisee. Now, this is the person who buys into a branch or two branches or three branches or whatever of the company. The first thing are the advantages. The franchisee benefits as the franchisor provides a lot of support, training to start the business, equipment, materials, advice and your brand name. The franchisee is also taking over an established business which is less likely to fail. And finally, the franchisee benefits from centralised advertising so they don't have to spend any money on advertising which can be really expensive. Disadvantages, however, the franchisee doesn't have complete freedom to run the business as they want to. They may not agree with decisions made by the franchisor, which makes implementing them pretty difficult. Um, the franchisee has to pay royalties to the franchisor so they don't get all the profits. They have to pay a percentage of them to the franchisor every year. And finally, franchises are expensive to buy in the first instance. They're not particularly cheap. So make sure you're aware of the advantages and disadvantages to both the franchisor and the franchisee. Now, on the next slide, there are some uh, videos for you to watch to, that will give you some more insight into the different types of organisation we've spoken about today. There is uh, one for PLCs. One for multinationals, it's about Coca-Cola and globalisation, and we've got two for franchises. These are all found on YouTube and the links are on that slide.